ready to answer your questions. Great. Thank you very much, Louise, for that presentation. As you were talking about review methods, um, I think it echoes some of what we have found when we have attempted to do reviews here. So definitely, that, I love that resonates with me. Uh, I'm going to get us started. So if you'd like to have uh, send in any questions, please do so in the chat box, and we will start taking them. But before we go to participant questions, you were just speaking about the kinds of conversations you were having with practitioners and decision makers, and you mentioned that they could see some local relevance. Can you both talk about some of the ways in which your knowledge user partners, practitioners in the field think they can start to use some of the findings from this review? Uh, I will defer to Jeanette for that. <laughs> Jeanette. Can you uh, can you answer that? You're you're closer to uh, to those issues than I am. No, it seems that uh, she has trouble finding the a new button. Uh, well, uh, I mean it, it's it's as well. I mean through examples that we were able to to get from from the reviews. Uh, and uh, through, uh, but you know, discussing with practitioners, we 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 fall quite easily into into interventions and and, and actions uh, like that. So, but until Jeanette comes in into the, the 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 comes to the phone, I will defer the answer to that. Okay, sounds good. So, Jeanette, you can unmute yourself using pound six. While you're doing that, I'm going to take some participant questions, and then we'll come back to that. Uh, so I'm going to start with a question, which is about the most important local re community resources. So which community resources are most strongly correlated with better health outcomes? I, I, I would say, I mean, if, 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 uh, if you're invested in community life, uh, there is no counterindication. I would say these are the type of resource where we didn't find any counter, any uh, even hint of negative correlation with the health outcome. Uh, all the others, all the other types of resources uh, may have, uh, uh, you know, counterindication or may uh, be associated, inconsistently associated. So, from what we can see from from the literature, um, investing in community health, in in community life. Uh, Investing in uh, in the food environment, uh, there are still quite a bit of unknown area, although it seems that from our results, uh, protecting children from a convenience store or 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 uh, the presence of uh, of uh, uh, the so-called uh, junk food. Uh, might be uh, uh, related to uh, healthier weight and healthier uh, eating. Great, thank uh, you. So, so, so Jeanette, uh, uh, as answer uh, your your question, uh, she she said that uh, a lot of partners uh, insisted on the importance of these kinds of results to develop their argument. Uh, 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 for decision makers, so, so th this idea again uh, that that you know th there are trends that there there are it's the sheer number of of, uh, of articles that is represented by this work that that brings a lot of weight to to the partial but 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 uh, conclusions that that we could have. Uh, and of course, I mean, a lot of our partners were were quite thrilled by uh, the clear results that we seem to have uh, concerning community life. Great, thanks for that, Louise and Jeanette. So, I want to continue with some questions from our participants. So, this is a question related to sustainable mobility. So, could you please clarify the meaning of sustainable mobility synthesis and the unfavorable correlation between access to sidewalks and the trauma outcome for children? 
Well, uh, of course. Uh, that again. I mean, we we one of the conclu one of the one of our methods uh, principle was not to go back to primary studies. So we were only an analyzing reviews, uh, and of course, at a population level, if you think of it, the the more uh, the more uh, sidewalks you have, the more people you will have on those sidewalks, and the more people you have on those sidewalks it, it, at the population level, you increase, uh, you may increase the risk. Uh, these are in 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 city neighborhood, uh, and and that's the way we uh, we interpret this, meaning that it, it, sidewalks are not sufficient. In terms of sustainable mobility, they bring people out, and those who are most vulnerable on sidewalks are children. And so, if you create uh, opportunities for walking, uh, beware of children and be more protected for children. And the, the interesting result about traffic calming. So, if you if you pair uh, the increase of sidewalks and, and increase walkability in general, uh, you must make an extra effort, especially for children, uh, to protect them from cars. Great. Thank you. So we're going to continue here with questions from our participants. And I see there are a number of questions from the method, so we'll come to that shortly. Uh, so the next question we have here has to do with the studies included in the review. So did any of the studies include major cities in Asia? Uh, Asia? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, uh, to the extent the, the I mean, our criteria was uh, OECD. Uh, so uh, probably Singapore, but but I I don't have the the details uh, of these studies. But mostly those, I mean I would say the great great majority of the primary studies are from the U.S., uh, Australia, and uh, Europe, and Canada. But mostly uh, from the U.S. And again, I mean this is part of. Uh, where science is uh, is being uh, is being done. Merci, Louise. So, keeping on here with our questions, I'm going to move to another question that's related to the methodology. Uh, so, it's a question about the difference between different kinds of reviews. So, what's the difference? So, the question is, what is the difference between an umbrella review and other kinds of synthetic reviews? So, say, a uh, scoping review, for example. Uh, umbrella reviews, reviews, reviews. So, it's a review of reviews. So, it's 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 already taking something that is synthesized and trying to synthesize. It a bit further, you know. Uh, usually, the term, other types of reviews uh, aggregate results from uh, what we would call primary studies. So, a primary study is a study that is being conducted by a team, by an investigator, uh, about a hypothesis and is being published as such. And of course, there is a, there is a, um, a, a, a bias, and that means that studies that are published are more likely to find results than, uh, than studies uh, that are unpublished. So we believe that unpublished, that uh, there is a, a bias towards what is called positive results. So, uh, the uh, the uh, and there are various forms of questions that can be asked to those primary result study. Uh, we can aggregate all the data into a a and and redo the analysis into a systematic review. We can 
take the results as such and present them and try to aggregate them in a narrative review. So when we review primary studies, we, uh, we usually try to, uh, to have an exhaustive uh, pool of studies that were conducted about a question and ask those primary studies a set of question, uh, either about uh, who does what, where, and how, or about what were the results of these studies. So an umbrella review, but what do you do when you have many reviews on the same question? So the, the literature now is starting to, uh, to, to, to publish a number of reviews, different people trying to aggregate the literature, finding other uh, journal, asking a question slightly differently. So what do you do when uh, you have uh, many reviews that were done about a subject? And this is where the umbrella reviews come into play. And of course, uh, what you, uh, you have to realize is that those reviews will not necessarily, and that's what we've shown, uh, will not necessarily uh, provide uh, the same answer to the same question. So uh, what we did struggle with was really how to synthesize all those results uh, without going back to the original studies. That would have been, as well, uh, a way of doing it. But uh, what we decided to do was, if, from the perspective of an NCC, for example, if you were to decide and to, 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 uh, to draw a conclusion for knowledge users based on this, I mean, you would weight the various reviews uh, through uh, by the quality of the methods they use and, and things like that. So, and that's the kind of picture that you would end with at the end of your process. Great. Thanks, answer? <laughs> so I think that was a great response. If you have further questions about that, please drop them in the chat box. Uh, so there's a question about a very specific toolkit which comes out of British Columbia. Uh, so someone from BC is saying we use the Healthy Built Environments Toolkit, and how does that complement the findings and framing? Uh, Louise, Jeanette, I'm not sure if either of you are familiar with that toolkit. If you're not, then that would be a bit of a difficult question to ask. But for the person uh, asking that question, Christine, if you can provide just a little bit more information, then that may help with the response we get. Thank you. Uh, Actually, I, I'm not aware of this toolkit uh, per se. Uh, actually, the, the social mobility uh, is is one perspective on the built environment, and and we're at this time uh, conducting another umbrella review about the built environment, right? and and more specifically about urban planning. Uh, and urban design and urban planning, which is more about uh, uh, the way parks are, are designed, the number of parks, and that, that, that kind of thing, uh, urban zoning and those kind of things. So we are in the process of uh, developing uh, this umbrella review. So my guess is that we will become aware <laughs> of the British Columbia Built Environment Toolkit when we're doing that. But at this point, you know, to answer uh, this question uh, narrowly, to provide the no narrow answer, no, it, it, I don't know how it complements this finding. And my guess is that it's not totally relevant because our findings are specifically about uh, mobility. Okay, great, thank you. And Jeanette is just adding to Louisa's response. So Jeanette is indicating here that the partners they work with on this particular synthesis are aware of the BC resource, and in their opinion, it is a complementary resource, even though the methods for generating the recommendations and findings are quite different. So it's 
seems to be a useful resource for people in the field. Um, we, we being the NCCDH, I think have hosted a webinar on that topic and we'll share the link after for folks who are interested. Thanks for that. For those of you who are interested in more information on the study, there are fact sheets now available in both English and French and as Jeanette has indicated, they will be journal articles published on the review findings. Yeah, I just want to uh, indicate that the fact sheets uh, were uh, designed and produced, you know, with knowledge users, uh, you know, with practitioners and intersectoral practitioners in mind and uh, with their input as well in terms of areas and orientation for action. Uh, the, the research articles are in the process of uh, being submitted and reviewed at this point. And, and those uh, fact sheets uh, are available uh, on the chair's website and uh, we can uh, share with you uh, the, the, the link. Great, thank you. So we have time for one or two final questions. So if you have those questions, please do send them in. And we have the link to the fact sheets in the chat box right now. All right, great. So I'd like to take a minute to really say thank you to both uh, Louise and Jeanette for the presentation. And I remember in my early conversations with Jeanette when we were planning this webinar, one of the things she mentioned, which Louise just really echoed today, is that um, investing in neighborhood resources is never, it's, it's really, it doesn't really harm health. So I think uh, the findings really confirm that. And I know one of the questions we often get from practitioners is where do we start? And um, these findings really say you can start in, the, in a number of different places because um, there is some evidence to support action. So thanks to you both for that. As we just mentioned, the fact sheets are available in English and French on our website and also on the chair's website. If you have any further questions, you can follow up. Jeanette's email is available in the slide deck and you can share questions directly to, to her or you can pass it on to NCCH and we will make that available to her. The recording of today's webinar will also be available on our website shortly. Um, please take a minute to complete the evaluation which you'll get after today's call. I'd like to take a minute to uh, just remind everyone that the NCCDH has just relaunched our online community, which is called Health Equity Clicks Community. Ash Echo, whose name you've seen in the chat box, is our community moderator. And we're really hoping that this is a space to bring together practitioners and researchers to continue to explore questions of interest related to health equity and the social determinants of health. In this iteration of the community, we're hoping for members to have to play a really strong role in what the community does and in actually hosting and facilitating community conversations. If that is of interest, please follow up with Ashakor directly. Her email is on the slide deck, atete at stfx.ca. We are hosting a series of webinars and workshops in Ontario to support the implementation of the Ontario Public Health Standards, particularly the health equity guidelines. So we have a number of on-demand webinars already live and the last set will be released in the first week of February. So please do take a look at those on our website. Again, in Ontario, we will be hosting five in-person workshops focused specifically on racial health in in inequities and how to advance that within the Ontario Public Health System. Again, you can check out our website for more upcoming webinars, which will be done, some of them, most of them in English, and we do have a few of them in French coming up. If you have Francophone colleagues, um, we are hosting this webinar in an hour, so at 3 p.m. Eastern, so they can join us for that, if that will be a better way for them to access today's presentation. So again, I'd like to thank our presenters for joining us today. Louise, merci, Jeanette, merci, and to all of you for joining us, thank you. Again, we will share the recording after today's call. So thanks again, and have a great day, everyone. Thank you very much.